the familiar faces in this conference again. And, um, you know, uh, when I was uh, registering myself uh, on, at uh, this conference, I thought that I will speak only about open sets. But uh, while preparing my talk, I I just realized that I would like to speak about uh, the closed sets also. So my talk will be a little bit extended. The weekly one semiconvex sets in the n-dimensional real Euclidean space Rn can be seen as a generalization of linearly accessible domains in the plane of the univalent function theory. Moreover, weekly one semiconvex sets can be disconnected, and under some additional conditions, the disconnectedness of a set in the plane necessarily follows from its weak one semiconvexity. The theory of uh, weekly one semiconvex sets is nevish, and the notion was coined by Yuri Zielinski in uh, 2017. An open set of the space Rn is called weakly one semiconvex if every boundary point of the set is the initial point of some closed ray not intersecting the set. The example of such a set you can see on the picture to the left. Let us also determine the closed weakly one semiconvex sets. But first, I will recall uh, the following definition. They say that a set is approximated from the outside by a family of open sets if the closure of uh, each subsequent set is contained in the previous one and the intersection of all sets of the family is uh, the given set. It is not difficult to show that a set which is approximated from the outside by a family of open sets is closed. So a closed set in the space Rn is called a weakly one semiconvex if it can be approximated from the outside by a family of open weakly one semiconvex sets. And we need the third definition. A point in the complement of a set to the whole space is a one non-semiconvexity point of the set if every closed ray emanating from the point intersects the given set. The collection of all one non-semiconvexity points of a given set is said to be the one non-semiconvexity set corresponding to the given one. One can intuitively see that if a domain in the plane has one non-semiconvexity points, then it is not weakly one semiconvex. And the disconnectedness of any open weakly one semiconvex set with non-empty one non-semiconvexity set in the plane was established by Yuri Zelinsky. Moreover, the following result is true. Any open weakly one semiconvex set in the plane with non-empty one non-semiconvexity set consists of not less than three connected components. And the example of an open weakly one semiconvex set in the plane with non-empty one non-semiconvexity set uh, consisting of three connected components is as follows. Take a disk in the plane and throw away the points of a closed triangle inside this disk. Let us also cut the obtained set with rays containing the con triangle side. And uh, mm, the final set consists of three connected components painted in gray in this picture. And it is weakly one semiconvex since for any boundary point there exists a ray emanating from this point and not intersecting the set. 
but any ray emanating from a point inside the open triangle ABC and only inside it intersects our set. Thus, its one non-semiconvexity set is exactly this open triangle. And if we want to construct such a set with some other number of components, then instead of a triangle, we should take a polygon with the number of sides that is equal to the desirable number of components of the set. Moreover, we can even take a generalized polygon with countably infinite number of sides. And later we will see that being the union of polygons or generalized polygons is one of the properties of the one non-semiconvexity set corresponding to a weakly one semiconvex set in the plane. Closed weakly one semiconvex sets are expected to possess the same property as the open sets. Any closed weakly one semiconvex set in the plane with non-empty one non-semiconvexity set consists of not less than three connected components as well. And uh, the example of such a set uh, consisting of three connect connected components is on this picture. It's one non-semiconvexity set is the small closed triangle. Interestingly, that the number of components of weakly uh, one semiconvex sets with non-empty one non-semiconvexity sets is also affected by the smoothness of its boundary. Any open or closed bounded weakly one semiconvex set in the plane with smooth boundary and non-empty one non-semiconvexity set consists of not less than four connected components. And In this picture, we can see the example of an open set with smooth boundary and four, exactly four connected components. Consider two non-overlapping congruent disks, this small one, and draw the rays starting at the boundary point A of the first disk and tangent to the second one. And draw the rays starting at the point C of the second boundary um, point of the disk and uh, mm, uh, tangent to the first one. And let us also draw two parallel straight lines outside the disks. Then take two extra disks tangent to the respective rays and straight lines. So the obtained set consisting of four disks is weakly one semiconvex because for any boundary point there exists a ray emanating from the point and not intersecting this the union of these disks. And uh, the points inside the rhombus A, B, C, D are the one non-semiconvexity points because any ray emanating from uh, this rhombus intersects at least one of the disks. All these results were obtained for the sets on the plane. And what about the higher dimensions of the space? The following result shows that the property of weakly one semiconvex sets with non-empty one non-semiconvexity sets in the plane to consist of not less than three connected components is violated in the spaces of higher dimensions. There exist weakly one semiconvex domains and closed connected sets in the space Rn, where n is greater than two, with non-empty one non-semiconvexity set. Oh, I'm sorry. We prove the theorem by the constructing such a domain for each dimension. First, consider three-dimensional space and consider a weakly one semiconvex set in the plane and construct the cylinder that is the Cartesian product of the flat set and the interval minus one 
one. <coughs> Let us also consider the convex hull of uh, our flat set and two extra cylinders with convex hull at the base. Now, join together all these cylinders. One, two, three. Then we obtain a three-dimensional domain that is weakly one semiconvex with respect to any boundary point except the points of the bases of the red triangular prism. Then remove uh, from our set the points of that flat zones L1, L2 contain the triangles. And finally, we obtain the desirable domain. Moreover, the points of the open red prism are one non-semiconvexity points. Similar, we can construct a four-dimensional weekly one semiconvex domain with non-empty set of one non-semiconvexity points by taking as the base of the prisms uh, the already constructed three-dimensional domain and so on. Thus, we can have a weekly one semiconvex domain for each n dimensional space. This year, I decided to uh, consider the properties of exactly one non semiconvexity sets corresponding to weekly one semiconvex sets in Rn. These sets have different properties in the plane and in the spaces of higher dimensions. First, we consider um, the case of the plane. Let an open weekly one semiconvex set in the plane with non-empty one non-semiconvexity set be given. Then the one non-semiconvexity set is also open and weakly one semiconvex. The components of the one non-semiconvexity set are convex and bounded. And more, any connected subset of the one non-semiconvexity set's boundary consisting of only smooth points is a line segment or a point. And fourth, there exists a not greater than countably infinite collection of rays contain the boundary of the one non-semiconvexity set and such that the union of these rays and the one non-semiconvexity set does not contain rays emanating from the one non-semiconvexity set. And this set does not intersect the given set. In other words, the one non-semiconvexity set corresponding to the flat weekly one semiconvex set is the union of open polygons and generalized polygons, but they cannot be randomly placed on the plane. For example, uh, if we consider two triangles placed side by side, like in this picture, then we can see that these two triangles does not, uh, um, okay, the uh, property D does not uh, fulfill for these uh, triangles. Uh, so this, uh, the union of these triangles cannot be someone's one non-semiconvexity set. But if we leave some free space between them, then Everything is good and uh, uh, we can find weekly one semiconvex set such that this, these two triangles are the one non-semiconvexity set of this set. So um, we can place uh, these two triangles inside uh, the open convex set, then cut the final set uh, with uh, rays contain the sides of triangles. And uh, this blue set is weakly one semiconvex at, and it's one non-semiconvexity set is exactly the union of these two triangles. Uh, 
And what about the higher dimensions of the space? The one non semiconvexity set corresponding to an open weekly one semiconvex set in the space Rn, where n is greater than two, is open and weekly one semiconvex. But there exists an open weekly one semiconvex set in the space Rn such that its one non semiconvexity set is a non convex unbounded domain. And the example of uh, such a set in the space R3, uh, three dimensional space possessing the property B is the union of infinitely many the oblique cylinders with the base that is flat open weekly one semiconvex set with non empty one non semiconvexity set. Then the one non semiconvexity set corresponding to the volumetric open weekly one semiconvex set is the union of the triangular oblique uh, prisms painted in red. The methods developed to prove the property A of the of theorem seven allow us to establish the following result. The non-empty interior of a closed weekly one semiconvex set in the space Rn is weekly one semiconvex two. The converse statement is not always true. There exists a closed not weekly one semiconvex set with weekly one semiconvex interior. For example, take the closure of any flat weekly one semiconvex domain and connect any two of its boundary points with a curve outside the domain. Then the union of the closed set and the curve is not weekly one semiconvex because it cannot be approximated from the outside by open weekly one semiconvex sets, but its interior is weekly one semiconvex, obviously. Uh, and um, as you could see, this theorem seven and theorem six were proved only for open weekly one semiconvex sets. Uh, I uh, didn't investigate um, the case of closed weekly one semiconvex sets yet. And this is all. Here you can see the references. Thank you very much for your attention.